Good day YouTube, it's Brett here from Overtime Gaming with you once again. Hope all is well in all your lives and everything. Now, in this video we've got some more FIFA 13 connected career modes. Um, if you've watched any of the other videos, we're Newcastle United and we're leading a French revolution. Now, if you know anything about Newcastle, you'll know we've got a number of French players. I mean, in tonight's, in tonight's real life game uh, against Anzi, Maka, blah, 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 blah whatever their second name is, um, from Russia, I think it's Russia, we, um, in the Europa League, we actually have seven French players starting, <laughs> and without a striker, but we'll get on to that later. Now anyway, back to the series, um, so far in the series we haven't had a very good start, I mean we've only won one game, we've lost to Tottenham, and we've lost to Chelsea, <laughs> we beat Villa, and then we went and lost to Hartlepool, in the Capital One Cup. So we're no longer in the League Cup. It's a bit of a mick take. I can't believe we lost to them. But we are still in Europe. And we'll be looking to turn our luck around here. Against FC20 in the Europa League group stage. Now we'll be looking for a win here. On paper our sides. The commentator on the game said we were even. But when I look at it. I think we're a much stronger side, and you'll see my team come up now. You'll see I've stuck with the same side as I put out against Hartlepool, but we've changed our formation slightly. We're now playing 4 2 3 1. So we've got two defensive midfielders in Ben Arthur and Kabai. Well, Ben Arthur is playing more of a centre midfielder, and we've got Sissoka on the right midfield, Menez on the left, Jeffron a centre attacking midfield, and then Thierry Henry up front. Now, in the summer, I will be looking to upgrade Thierry Henry and Jeremy Aliadier. They were literally a, a filler for the time being. And you just saw their team go past just before they kicked off. You'll notice they don't have many players that people really know that well. Maybe Frey. That's all that I really knew. So, in my opinion, we are a hell of a lot better team. And they almost scored there very early. But we did keep them out. Now... We're going to what we need to sign in the January transfer window. It's a long way off for January. We haven't even finished September yet. But that's not the point. We are starting to plan now. The first need I'm going after in January, and I'm already guaranteeing this, is Lucas Dingy. Oh, almost a goal there. Lucas Dingy from Lille. He's a 19-year-old left-back, French left-back. And he looks a very strong player already. And I will look, be looking to bring him in. So I can put Bacali on the bench rather than starting. Now that will also have strengthen our defence up. But I really like Dingy's attacking prowess. I think he's a very good player and has great potential. And will be one of the best for France in the future. So if we can bring him in. And I think they want around £4 million for him. And I can handle paying that. We will try and put a player in the deal and so we can spend less. But if we can't, I'm not too worried about that. Now... The other need is a striker. And this is the need I'm not really sure who we're going to go after yet because, of course, strikers are overpriced. Hang on, let's just see what comes from this attack. It's a lovely ball in. Oh, it's a beautiful finish. And, of course, Newcastle go 1-0 down here, but that is an absolutely beautiful finish. As you can hear, the crowd here at St. James's Park has gone slightly silent. They don't know what's hit them. I mean, look at this beautiful cross and then the... Oh, that's just beautiful. The finish, he was off balance and he pulled it back from behind him. It's a lovely finish and if a Newcastle player had done that, the crowd would have loved it. Now, back to the striker issue. Right now we have Jeffron, who I prefer playing as a centre attacking midfielder in all honesty. He will definitely be staying. We've got Ali Adier and Thierry Henry. Now, if a good deal comes for either of them in the January transfer window. Ah, oh, we strike right back. Thierry Henry. That is why we bought him, and I don't want to sell him, but that is why we bought him. Finishes like that, moments of class, moments of brilliance. Now, he's on the old side, and that's one of the reasons why I am considering selling him in January, if not at the end of the season. But for the time being, the reason we got him is finishes like that. Now, in January, as I was saying, we're going after a striker. And if the right amount of money comes in for either Ali Adier or Henri, we will be selling them to raise funds for this striker. Now, I know I've just bought both of them, but like I said, they were just need fillers. So, if we do need to sell them, I'm fine with that, if we can get our striker. 
And as in earlier episodes, I was going after Benzema, but I don't have the money anymore. That will definitely have to be a next season thing. So we will be going after someone like Gomez or Gamero. Now, they're both good players. Gomez is slightly older, a couple of years older. And he's also about a million pounds more. So we may not be going after him. We may be going after the Gamero. Gomez is the one I actually want, but Gamero may be the best option. But the other player I'm looking at, and this is probably the most likely, is Giroud um, from Arsenal. Oof, I don't know he's called again. From Arsenal. And obviously, I couldn't buy him this transfer window because they have just recently bought him. But January, I may be able to. And he's about a million cheaper than Gamero. So he's about, I think he's about 5.5 or 6.5 million. And I can handle paying that. I'll probably have to pay around seven for him. But I can handle paying that for a top quality striker, especially when I've still got players to sell. So I'm okay with that. And he will definitely straight away take a starting role. And the reason I like him as well is because he's a younger guy. He's slightly younger than Gamero. So it definitely helps us out in the long run which is what I'm looking for in all honesty. I expect this season to be a complete flop, if you haven't noticed already. I mean, we've already lost a Hartley ball, for Christ's sake, so I do expect it to be a flop. But if we can pull something out of the bag, that will definitely be a bonus, but I'm looking to build for the long run. Now, there are a number of other players I'm looking for. There's someone like Jan and Villa, um, and players like that I'm definitely looking at. But the main midfielder I'm looking at, and... I'm doing scouting at the moment, as in real life scouting. I am looking at him, I've looked at a few of his goals. If you don't know who Paul Pogba is, go check him out. He was a Man United youngster. I actually got told about him by one of the guys who commented on the last video. He was a Man United youngster, Fergie couldn't keep hold of him and he went to Juventus. And since going to Juventus, he has looked like an absolute beast. Now, if you don't know who he is, go on YouTube, Pause this video, go open another tab, and go look for him. Type in Paul Pogba, two goals versus Udinese. Look at those two goals from a centre midfielder, and you will just be amazed. That is what I am going after him. He's a young player who I will probably have coming off the bench for now. And he will just make our team so much better. If we do get him... I'm guessing he'll go on the bench straight away, but he may push Jeffer onto the bench and he'll play as a centre attacking midfielder. But then again, it also depends on if I go after Jan and Villa. And if we get Jan and Villa, him and Kabai will play holding midfielders with Sissoko playing an attacking midfielder. So again, Jeffer will be pushed to the bench. Now, I don't think that will happen in January because I won't have the funds available to me, but these are just future moves I'm going for. So I'm guessing that will happen next season. So look out for that. Obviously, that's a long way off because we've got so many episodes left to do. I mean, we're not even out of September yet. But I'm just planning for the future here, guys. Now, as I'm doing this commentary, I've actually got the Newcastle game on TV. So I feel like I'm going to talk a bit about that. And I've just looked at the starting lineup and noticed... Pardew hasn't included a single striker on the starting lineup. We've got Ben Arthur playing the most forward man. I'm okay with that because Ben Arthur is an attacking prowess, an attacking presence. So I'm kind of okay with that. But I would like him to start a striker. Now, the issue we have, I don't want him to start Shola Amiobi. So I'm seeing why he doesn't want to play a striker. Amiobi's not very good. He never has been very good. But as well as that, Jeffron and Cisse are basically our only two striking threats other than Amiobi. So we don't want to be overworking them. And playing them this week, as they played at the weekend, so the weekend this week, next weekend, and next week in the Europa League again, is not going to be the best idea. Because that's four games in the space of a week, a week and a half. And I can definitely see in that have damaging effects. And we can't risk an injury to a striker right now. So I can understand why he's doing it. But again, I just think it's a bad move by Pardew. As much as I don't like Amiobi, I think I would have had to start him. 
purely for that striker presence. But let's see how it goes. We may pull it out the bag. I mean, by the time this video is actually uploaded, the game will be over. So we'll see if it had worked or not. I don't see Ben Arthur lasting the whole game. Oh, no. 78th minute. We go down 2-1. Hopefully we can come back from this, but the way our form's been lately, I don't know if we can. But you have to watch the end of the video to see if we can come back. Now, going back to the real football, I think Pardew needs out. I think he's run his course with this side. He's a good manager, but this side's got too big for him now. He's too talented. I mean, position-wise in the Premier League, I'd give him till the end of the season get us out of this relegation battle I mean if we win at the weekend and certain teams above us don't we could actually end up 10th or 11th so it will help us out I mean I don't think we're going to be in Europe next year unless we win the Europa League um, well we're definitely not going to be in Europe next year unless we win the Europa League so we won't have that trouble next year but I just think it's time for Pardew to go at the end of the season we need a new manager we've got too many talented players now that the French players we brought in need to be utilised more. I mean, Mbiwa at the centre-back position, I don't understand why he hasn't been started at all. I'm completely fine with us selling Colaccini. I've never rated Colaccini that much. I know he's captain and everything, but I'd rather have Kabay as captain. But the other thing we need to do, real life this is, in summer, is make sure we keep hold of Ben Arthur and Kabay. Now, Ben Arthur, I don't think will go anywhere because of his injury concerns. But I could see him possibly moving if a big club comes in for him. And there we go. We complete the comeback. And again, Thierry Henry in the 90th minute. That is why we signed him, ladies and gentlemen. Two class goals. And there you go. The icing on the cake. We may have just pulled points out of the bag on this one. I was hoping for a win. But a draw is a point in the bag. And gives us a little bit of hope in the Europa League. And I know we've got one next week in the Europa League on this as well but back to real life now I don't I think we'll keep Kabay, um, Ben Arthur even because I don't think a big club's going to come in for him this season because of his injury problems if he stays healthy next season he'll definitely be gone but I think we may lose Kabay. I don't want to Kabay is my favourite player and I actually, I'm just, well, I've got a shirt with his name on the back. So I really hope we don't lose him. But I think we may do. I don't think he'll want to go. But again, if someone like Madrid, PSG or someone like that comes in for him, which I don't think will happen. But someone of that standard, like Man United, come in for him. I don't think he can turn it down. And I don't really blame him. I hope he doesn't. But that'll be that. But anyway, guys, you've just seen the end of the game. And we drew one all. I was hoping for more, but we couldn't pull it out of the bag, but we pulled out a draw. And as you saw, Kabay has actually turned down a contract offer from us, um, but he's still got a few years left yet. So hopefully we can sort that out in the next video. Now, peace out, YouTube. Remember to follow me on Twitter, like this video, leave a comment and subscribe, guys. Peace out, guys. We're heading into overtime.